Over the years, I've punished my cameras. They've been punched into my face. They've been shot with tear gas. And they've also filmed over 1,700 hours worth of shows, something like 4,000 total bands. So I wanted to do a video to talk about every camera I've ever used with 8x6. Let's get into it. So the first one I ever used was my parents' Panasonic Palm Quarter uh, AF-X8. I don't know much about this. I can't find really much information about it online. Uh, if you look up the X, uh, if you look up the AF-X8, uh, you're going to see a model that does not look like this. So I don't know what the what what that's all about. Um, but this is what I used essentially from 2000 until 2002 when I was in high school. This is what I really learned to film stuff with. None of none of the stuff I filmed on this camera is actually online. Um, Oh my God. This camera actually uses a tape called a VHS-C. So it's, think of it as like a small VHS tape. Uh, and the way that you play it back is you need to use a VHS-C adapter. And how this works is you, you, you pop it open. Takes a minute. And then you take the, uh, the tape from the camera, you pop it in here, close it. And what it's doing is it's uh, opening up the film strip. So now you can see the actual tape is here. So you can now pop this into a VCR and play it back. And that's how you uh, are able to watch the stuff that's on here. So um, again, this is what I used very early on, uh, pre-856 technically. Um, and yeah, uh, I, I'm surprised that I still have it. It's not turning on for some reason. Um, I don't know if there is a short or what, but I'm hoping to have, I'm hoping to get this power back on one day because uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually a tape in here. So uh, I'm, I'd like to know what's on this tape. There might be something interesting, but who knows? Maybe that's that's uh, that's a project for another day. Next up is the uh, Canon ZR45. I remember getting this camera in high school, um, probably around 2002, I think. What I liked about this camera was that it's a uh, it's a digital video camera, so it's not analog. So um, similar to the other camera, it still uses a tape. It's a much smaller tape, but this is actually it's 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 recording digital video and not analog. So um, it's uh, it retains the quality much longer. Um, I also what I liked about this camera was that it had a flip out screen, so it was very easy for me to to see what I was recording as I was filming. I could actually like look on the on the screen. Um, not the best in low light, but it, it did the job, especially as technically my second camera, but more or less my first that I really learned to shoot shows on. Um, yeah, this is this is a great, uh, great way to, to learn how to film. Um, this is my first of several Canon cameras, as you'll see. Um, but yeah, so I shot with this from around uh, like 2002 till maybe around 2003 or four. And I stopped filming for a couple years. I stopped filming from around 2004 until 2007, which is when I upgraded to my next one. So next up is the Canon GL2. Uh, this is the camera that I use for many years. Basically, I got this in uh, around 2007. Um, I was in college at that point. Uh, and what happened was people were uh, professional videographers who had uh, high def cameras. They were selling off their standard def cameras at a huge discount. So I got this on eBay for like maybe six, 700 bucks. I don't remember, but it was, wasn't was that much. Um, like the other camera, it uses these, um, it still uses these mini DV tapes. Um, they pop in over here on the side. Um, this one has a battery, so I can actually show you. So tape pops in here. There you go. And also has this, you know, this, the same idea with the with the, with the flip out screen. What I really liked most about this camcorder design was the fact that it had the top handle and also had like the side strap. So um, I've always loved this form factor of a camera because this always has given me so much flexibility. From you know, if I want to get you know tight panning shots, I can just keep the camera close to me like this, or also just hold the uh, hold the top handle. And you'll also see that this camera has a, uh, 
this ring here is typically used for zooming and focusing. So what I really like about this style of camera is I'm able to hold the camera in a bunch of different ways and I can also control, uh, manually control the zoom and focus very easily with my other hand. So one thing that I, I, I've done a lot, and if you see me filming a show, you'll see me do this quite a bit, where is where I'm I'm like filming like this, and then I'll, you know, I'll I'll put the camera high to get ooh, drop the tape. I'll hold the camera high to get a high shot, and then I'll bring it down. And I have just I just love the flexibility of going like this down to this, and then being able to grab the top handle. So this is my go-to form factor for many years. Um, I didn't really do a whole lot of modification to this. I did get this um, Sentry Optics 16 by nine, like widescreen lens that I added to it. So that was able to give me a much wider field of view that I used for um, a couple years. Um, one of the frustrations that I had with using this camera and also with the previous Canon um, is that like the, like the ZR45, the GL2, again, it records to tape. And one of the, 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 big, the big drawback for me with shooting to tape is that if you have an hour's worth of footage, again, it takes an hour to, con to, to, to convert that tape. So to transfer, a, to transfer tape to a computer, you have to do it in real time. And so one of the things that I did later on with using my GL2 is that I took the, um, in the back here, you'll see a, uh, this is a Firewire mini DV port. So one thing that I used to do is I would actually take a Firewire cable and I would plug one end in here and I would plug in the other end to a laptop. And basically at a show, I would keep the laptop in a backpack and there would be a cable running out of my backpack to the back of this. And the laptop would be recording the feed directly from the camera. So I started doing that to save time. So I was no longer spending time converting tapes after a show because at the show I was actually recording directly to a laptop so that posed a lot of challenges if the cable uh, if the cable uh, became loose or if the laptop battery died I would lose everything so there was a lot of risk involved there but I managed to find ways of minimizing failure with that so I want to say that this is hardcore 2010 was filmed using that method. I actually had, I think, a laptop in my backpack and I was filming directly through that. So, um, yeah, so this is, my, this is my camera from around 2006, 2007 till 2011. And 2011 is when I upgraded to my first high def camera. So in 2011, that's when I upgraded to this. This is the uh, Canon XF100. It's kind of like the, uh, the older sibling to the GL2 in many ways. Uh, this is a T full HD 1080p uh, camera that has a bunch of different recording modes so you can record um, some high frame rate stuff I think up to well at the time high frame rate which is which is 60 frames per second uh, which which by today's standards is not is not anything special um, but this camera has a lot of great features again again similar to the GL2 uh, I'll show you a side-by-side -side comparison with with the which just to give you a sense of the, 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 the size here. So the, uh, the, the XF100 is, whoa, it's a little smaller. It's a little smaller. Um, it's actually, it's, it's, it's lighter too. Um, but it also has the same form factor of having the, the top handle and also the side strap. So again, again, when I'm filming shows with this, I'm constantly switching between, you know, keeping the camera close to me and then also grabbing the, the top handle to go low and then putting my hand into the into the, the side handle to go high. So I just love the way this feels. Um, one of the major upsides to the XF100 is that it takes memory cards. So this was taking, um, this supports a, a dual recording to um, compact flash cards, which basically you just slide them in here. Actually I have some compact flash in here so I can show you. That's what this looks like. This is a 16 gig card. Um, so I, I have a bunch of these. I have a, I have a couple 16s, some 32s. I think I have 128. And so you get, you know, depending on, depending on the recording mode and the size of the card, you can get upwards of like maybe a couple hours. So this is a 128 gig card. I think I can get like 
about uh, 200 some minutes worth of recording time on a, on a 128 gig card recording at 1080p. So um, I like this camera a lot. This is what I've been using again from 2011 till basically now. Um, I like this camera so much that I bought three of them. So whenever I'm doing multicam shoots like at This Is Hardcore or any other big fest that need multiple cameras, um, I no longer have to rent them. I basically have three of these that I then um, that I then use. I mean, you can honestly use any combination of cameras, but I like keeping things consistent because it makes it easier to um, match the colors, match the look, and so that's why I ended up investing in a couple of these. So. Um, yeah, this is my workhorse. Um, it's not the best in low light, but again, it does the job. Um, if you've watched any 856 video in the last 10 years, it's likely been shot with this guy. So um, it's been through a lot. Um, this is not the original one that, I've, that I shot with. Uh, the original one, uh, so again, the zoom and focus ring is, on the, uh, is, is here. So when I'm filming, I'm constantly, um, I'm constantly you know, rotating the ring as I'm filming. So the the first XF100 that I have, the ring is so worn out. It's very loose because I've I abused the the hell out of it, just constantly zooming in and and racking focus. So um, I still have that one. Whenever I use it, it's it's used as a fixed camera angle, and I'm not um, I'm not really zooming in with it. So um, I've been lately I've been using this newer newer one because it has a much more um, much more reliable focus and zoom ring on there. Um, the built-in audio is not great. Uh, it gets the job done just to get a rough recording, but typically when I'm recording a show, I have a external mic plugged in here. I can't show it to you because I'm actually using it right now. Uh, it's a, it's actually, I can probably, no, I'm not gonna bother. It's a, um, it's a Zoom H6, which I mount on top of here, and it has a couple condenser mics built in. Uh, and that picks up the, the ambient audio. So uh, that's normally what I use. Obviously, if I have a soundboard recording, I mix that in on with this audio. But for the most part, the average show is just this camera with an external mic on top. And then when I'm editing it, I sync the audio to this camera. And then I do some basic EQ compression and mastering on that audio. And then it's good to go. Okay, last up is my latest one. This is a uh, Zcam E2. Um, it looks more intimidating than it actually is. So uh, I own three of these, and you'll you'll understand why in a second. So this is a souped-up E2, but the E2, when you get it, it looks like this. Um, the E2, the E2 is just a standard kind of like a cube. Uh, it's a it's a 4K camera that shoots up to. Um, 160 frames per second. So I can do a lot of great um, slow motion cinematic stuff with this camera. So typically it, it, it arrives as this cube and then you can add stuff to it. So yeah, so I'm, I'm using this as the, uh, the close-up camera. So this is the E2 up close. Whoop. So um, I just have a, it's a, it's a micro four thirds mount um, and I have a bunch of different micro four thirds lenses on there. Um, I'm using a V-mount battery here. So if I don't want to use a V-mount battery, I don't have to. So if I want just sort of, if I want a lightweight rig, here, I'll just show you what it looks like if I if I disassemble this whole thing. So this is just a uh, external mic. This is a mount here, which I'll show you in a second. Um, so this is, this is really what a bare bones E2 looks like. Uh, I have just a, a tilted cage on here. Um, and I, have this um, Revolver Labs um, clutch handle is what they call it. So this handle has everything that I need to do. Oh, I can uh, I can change the uh, the iris here, and I can change the, um, the the ISO here, and I can stop and record here. So it's it's just a very convenient handle. So if I'm doing a lot of like run run and gun shoots, if I'm um, lately when I'm filming some of the protests, I've been I mean I mean I'm, I'm filming with this because it's very compact. It's easy for me to maneuver with this, and I like the fact that I can I can start and stop record um, with just with it, with from the from the grip itself. Um, like I said, um, you don't have to use a V-mount battery. That there it, it takes a standard MPF takes a standard MPF battery here, um, which you can get like a couple hours worth of recording time on. 
Um, I typically use this V-mount battery um, because it gives me much more recording time. And I can also power other devices. So if I need to power my phone, I can power it from the V-mount. Um, now, one of the things that I've done is I've added this mount here. You can see it on, on the back. So um, you can basically use your phone as a monitor. And so what I like about this is, I mean, I, I own some external monitors, but um, those are not the most battery efficient. So if I need like a very quick, dirty monitor, I can use my phone and it connects wirelessly. So that's another cool thing about this camera um, is it, it has a wireless connection. So you can connect to a iPad or your phone wirelessly. Um, you can actually live stream from the phone or from the camera in a couple ways. You could either, uh, if, you're, if you have your phone um, tethered to the back. So I'll show you what the back of the E2 looks like. So the rear of the E2, oops, uh, here we go. Let's change the focus here so you can actually see it. So the E2 has um, a USB-C port, so you can you can actually tether your phone via USB-C and get a low latency, use your phone as a low latency monitor. Uh, there is, again, there is a uh, Wi-Fi um, antenna here. So if I need, if you need to really, you know, connect wirelessly, you can, but there is gonna be some latency involved. Um, it's not it's not terrible, but it's it's much more reliable to use the USB C port. Um, the USB C port also double it has a bunch of other uh, uh, uses. So you can actually record directly to a uh, hard drive. Um, there's certain there are certain types of hard drives that work um, more reliably than others. Um, lately, I've I've actually been using I don't have one in here, but this takes a uh, CFAS card which slides into this this little. Uh, this little port here. So this takes CFast, CFast. CFast cards are much more expensive than Compact Flash, but it is what it is. Um, it's part of the investment that you have to make when you are when you wanna shoot with like a, a cinema camera like the E2. Um, trying to think what else I wanna talk about. Oh, oh right, so I, I have this uh, Deity microphone that just, you know, slides in up top here. It's nothing, I mean, it, it works It works fine. The built-in microphone on the E2 is not great at all. The preamps on here are actually terrible. So you, you're not gonna get great audio with it. You can, use the, you can use the audio within the E2 as like a scratch track, just to reference and get a rough idea of um, what you picked up. But it's, you're, it's highly advisable that you use an external audio source. Um, trying to think what else. I want to talk about with the E2. Oh, right. So the the other thing I wanted to mention is the E2 has this uh, focus, focus, focus. So the E2 has a built-in Ethernet port. So um, when I'm doing live streams, when I'm when I'm doing a live stream, um, I basically have all three of my E2s connected via Cat6 Ethernet cables to a gigabit switch. And so technically I don't need to record to the compact flash or I don't actually need to record at all because the feed is being sent directly from the E2 to the uh, streaming computer that's basically pulling in all of the angles. So that's what I really love about the Zcam E2. Um, none of this is not a paid, none of this is a promotion. Uh, I'm not getting paid for any of this. Um, I'm basically just talking about the cameras that I like here, but really the reason that I bought three of them is because it's a you know it's a it's a it's a cinema camera 4K cinema camera that supports um, 120 frames per second up to 120 up to 160 uh, 4K cropped, um, but and two it supports 240 frames per second at 180. But again, what I really liked about it was that it has all this built-in uh, functionality for streaming. That it's uh, it it sort of gives me the best of both worlds. So. Uh, I don't see a lot of cinema cameras offering that, and that's why you know I'm not filming. I mean, I'm, I'm filming all kinds of stuff, but lately my focus has been live streaming, and that's why I went with something like this over a Red. Um, so yeah, I love this camera quite a bit, um, and uh, yeah, I think moving forward, once shows resume, I might start filming shows with this, and I might retire my XF100. I don't know. Um, 
we'll see. Again, this 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 supports up to 4K. I don't know if I want to shoot shows at 4K. Maybe some big big reunions and stuff like that will shoot at 4K. But for the most part, I'm probably going to stick to 1080 because for the vast majority of people, you're watching these shows on your phone or your tablet, in which case 1080 is sufficient. And uh, the other trade-off there is if I'm shooting at 4K, it, it requires me... It requires much more storage space to save those files. So um, I'm going to do a whole separate video on how I back up my videos. Basically, I don't know if you can see it, but right here I have a, uh, a RAID array, a 50 terabyte RAID array. I actually have two of these. I have, a, I have a 100 terabyte, two 50 terabyte RAID arrays that store all of my footage. And so if I start shooting shows at 4K, I'm going to burn through that. I mean, I'm already burning through that storage space and I need to upgrade to something larger. Uh, but shooting shows at 4K is going to just completely eat that up. So, so yeah, that's basically it. Um, again, these are all the cameras I've ever used. The uh, the Panasonic uh, that I stole from my parents for a couple years that I shot like a couple random shows with. Then I upgraded to the uh, Canon ZR45. This is the first camera that I bought myself. Um, Again, this is what I use. Again, so the um, the Panasonic is what I use from about 2000 till 2002. The uh, ZR, ZR45 is what I use from 2000 about 2002 2003 till around 2006, I think. And that's when I upgraded to the um, that's when I up upgraded to the the GL2. The GL2 is the camera that I saw a lot of skateboard and BMX videos filmed with and I wanted to stick with Canon so that's when I upgraded to this. This is what lasted me from uh, up until like 2011. So um, I'll, I'll always hold on, I'm always going to hold on to these cameras but this one's going to, this one's going to have a special place in my heart. Um, after that is when I upgraded to the, um, the older sibling, uh, the Canon XF100. This is what I filmed the vast majority of 856 videos. At least 3,500 shows were filmed with this since 2011. Um, I own three of these. Um, again, I don't know if I'm going to continue using it. I might. Uh, I love the look of it. It has, like, even though it's not great in low light, I love the graininess to it. There's a certain grain to the way um, the image looks that I might continue using it. And uh, lastly is my uh, is the, the Zcam E2. Again, this is what I, I've sort of been using the last uh, year or so. Um, I haven't filmed, I mean, the, the, the live stream shows that I filmed during quarantine, so Year of the Knife, One Step Closer, um, and some of the Code Orange stuff um, was filmed with the Zcam E2. Again, this is a 4K cinema camera that has a lot of built-in um, streaming capability, which is why I bought it, because it allows me to do it gives me flexibility to do all sorts of sorts of things with it. Um, and yeah, that's that's basically it. If you have questions, feel free to hit me up. Um, I might do a more in-depth video on my on the HeyFastX Patreon. I might do a live stream um, walkthrough. Um, so if you're a Patreon subscriber, you can tune into that. I'll announce when I do that probably sometime next week or later in the month. So if you have some questions that you want to ask me in real time, you can tune into that live stream and ask away. But that's about it. I hope this was helpful. If you're just looking into getting into filming shows or filming in general, the advice that I have is like, don't go overboard, set yourself a budget and stay within that budget. And really what you want to focus on is, you know, most modern cameras, even your fucking phone, even your phone can film in 4K and maybe even higher depending on, depending on what phone you have. So really you want to you want to focus on getting good audio especially if you're filming if you're trying to film shows focus on getting good audio. Invest in a microphone um, either like an external mic that plugs directly into the camera or a digital audio recorder like a Zoom or a Tascam and then get good at syncing that audio to your camera and then doing you know EQ compression and mastering on that audio and uh, build up from there. So really what I tell people is if you're trying to learn how to film shows, uh, set yourself a budget. Um, don't go overboard with buying like a high-end camera for your first camera. Get something that's gonna film, you know, high quality and work well in low light. So like a DSLR is gonna work really well in low light. And then really focus your resources on buying a good microphone or a good digital audio recorder to get the audio that's gonna make your videos actually watchable. So 
That's my opinion. I really feel like what makes a video watchable is how good the audio is. Because if the audio is blown out and sounds awful, no one's gonna watch it. But if it sounds good, people are gonna either watch it or keep it on in the background. And that's what's gonna allow you to build up an audience. So that's my tip. That's the tip that I tell, tell everyone is get what you can, but really focus on the audio. But that's about it. I hope this was helpful. Uh, I'm gonna do more of these tech talks to talk about like um, behind the scenes stuff because I'm constantly um, um, working on different things. So expect more of these videos in the future, but that's all I got for now. Thanks.